Hello everyone, I'm San Tanaka. Thank you for your time. Today, we will be updating Docker containers. I will explain the process step by step, as shown in the video. Having this kind of knowledge is not only useful for updating Docker containers, but also for migration, scaling, and backup strategies in various scenarios. Let's get started right away. When you hear update, some people might think like this. If it's just a WordPress update, why not just do it from the dashboard? Indeed, that is a common and easy method to keep WordPress itself, as well as plugins and themes up to date. However, when operating WordPress in a Docker environment, updating through the dashboard requires attention to several key points. When using a simple rental server, container technologies like Docker are often unnecessary and the management of WordPress is significantly simplified. In this regard, using Docker locally or in the cloud allows you to overcome the limitations of simple rental servers and create a more flexible and scalable web application environment. I will also introduce how to update when the database is located in a different place compared to when it is on the same server. We will start with my home local environment where there is a container for WordPress and another for the database, with the database also being located at a different physical location. The images are slightly outdated, although they have been updated by the dashboard, as mentioned earlier. Why not just enter the container and update the OS? That should solve the problem, right? Actually, I used to do that too, but it is not recommended to update via commands inside the container. Let's practice how to build the necessary environment while ensuring the reproducibility, security, and performance of containers. By the way, one might say swimsuits are irrelevant, right? Well, since such provocative content is rarely seen in videos, I decided to use it as a way to differentiate ourselves. For now, while I am operating WordPress, Important files are located in the container, so I'll back them up. Wait a minute, there's an error here. We're backing up to the host, right? Yes, exactly. I'll now explain the command to copy specific files and directories from the container to the host system. When using this command to copy files or directories from a container to a host, if the destination directory does not exist, it is automatically created. However, while the final directory in the destination path can be automatically created, its parent directories must already exist. The reason for the error is that the necessary parent directories were not present. So, let's create a parent directory. I am using an official image, and the locations of relevant files within the container have already been analyzed. In the video, I will copy the continually updated WordPress files and associated PHP files. This should prevent any errors from occurring with the same command used previously. I will copy the PHP-related files because they have modifications such as the maximum upload size. Furthermore, I will adjust the file permissions of the WordPress-related directories copied to the host to match those of the container. Since both the host and the container run Ubuntu, the same user exists on both. When you hear this, some might wonder. What? What if the host's OS is CentOS or something? Well, in that case, you'd likely switch to using Podman, which is compatible with Docker. Yes, in such cases, you would create the necessary user on the host and also check the user in group IDs. More details are available at the link in the video's description. Writing commands directly might lead to warnings from YouTube's management, as they could be mistaken for some sort of code. Therefore, given that the files are also on the host, I will use them to create a YAML file. The reason there is no database information is that the connection details are in the wp-config.php file, which we are mounting. 
there are no other files to back up, so I will stop and remove the existing container. Just in case, it is possible to save the state of the currently running container as a new image. As noted in the YAML file, I will obtain the official image. To save disk space, I will delete old images. I will launch the container using the YML file we created earlier. This should allow you to view the WordPress site in its latest state. However, the issue arises when the database is on the same server. Someone might think this upon hearing it. Normally, WordPress is launched together with its database, right? Shouldn't that be written in the YML file we mentioned earlier? Something seems off. Well, indeed. When using Docker Compose to launch, there is a possibility of encountering such issues. However, this is not necessarily the case when launched independently. It's also a learning opportunity. So why not learn the strategies together? I have not specifically included network information in the YNL file, but in that case, a unique network is created by default. In other words, on the same host, the automatically created network for WordPress is separate from the database network, so they cannot communicate directly. If we check in the terminal, Docker by default has three types of networks, but the creation of the WordPress container has added an additional network. If we were to diagram it, it would show that the WordPress and database containers are using different Docker networks, which prevents them from communicating. Therefore, I will adjust them to belong to the same network and proceed with the following scenario. Normally, containers belonging to different Docker networks cannot communicate directly. However, if you absolutely need to enable communication, you can customize the Docker network settings to allow interaction between different networks. I imagine it would look something like this in a diagram. This scenario can be achieved through commands. Upon hearing this, someone might think, Why bother with all this? Couldn't you just create a YML file that includes both containers from the beginning? Well, indeed, that, that's true. However, having this knowledge, can make migration and development much easier and more convenient to manage. Let's try this out in the terminal. First, we will create a YML file that includes the custom network name. At this point, the custom network has not yet been created. Before I forget, I will stop and delete the container we created earlier. Since we have also created a YAML file, I will use it to establish a Docker network. Just to be sure, I'll check if the network has been created properly. It was successfully created, but there is also a network that was automatically created earlier. If it's unnecessary, it's better to delete it, but I forgot and only realized it later. The database container is connected to an existing network, so I will disconnect it. I have disconnected the database from the existing network. Next, by connecting it to the same Docker network as WordPress, they should be able to communicate with each other.
I will also launch the WordPress container. The database now belongs to a new Docker network, so its IP address should have changed. This enables communication between the containers. However, some might overlook the final details. Now we can communicate with each other. Let's check it in the browser. Very close. If you enter this IP address into the wp-config.php, it should work properly. Also, even if you stop and delete the containers, you can quickly restore them like this. Finally, I have something important to discuss. Regularly update your images to enhance functionality and strengthen security. In the video, we manually fetch the image and launch the container. However, the previous IML file does not update the image automatically. You can also set up tools or scripts for automatic image updates. I look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye.